Hello, my name is Veronica, and welcome to the Learning Lab, episode number 133, Micah Gloss meets Ika Dika Dika. Come on in, and let's get started in today's lab. Now, most of you know how much I love my inks, pens, markers, I don't care, you name it. But uh, these are some that I picked up at Joann's when I think they were 50% off and free shipping. But I want to play around with the Ika Dika Dika and some of my Micah Gloss. I've elected to play with the green, this wonderful blue, and I couldn't decide on gold or copper. We'll see which one I scored out onto my disposable palette. Now I went into my stamps that came with my gear set and I cannot tell you the names of these. I can just simply show you the picture because I didn't keep up with the names when I ripped them out of the box. But the one that I've chosen to use is this one. I think it's really cute. Now generally the Michael Gloss stamps a whole lot better uh, when the image is when the image is a little bolder, probably something like one of these. But I'm gonna try a more open image just to see what I get. Now for the paper, I am not using the glossy paper as Judy Kins often recommends. I am just using some uh, matte black cardstock. These are some tags I cut using the Cricut card from tags, bags, boxes, and more. I had cut them for a project and end up cutting them the wrong size. So I have a huge stack of tags that were all cut the wrong size for that project but not for this one so I'm going to put these to use. I am going to use the rectangular one because I want to put a border going along the side of my tag. So off to the side the only thing I'm doing is using one of my disposable palettes and I'm just going to squeeze some of my metallic paints onto the surface. These do need to be mixed. I won't have you watch me shake <laughs> but I'm gonna get these prepared squeeze them out and when I come back we'll be ready to start stamping okay so I looked up and saw that my video <laughs> had stopped so I don't know if you saw where I stamped that along there or not but I am going to take a different stamp and stamp in between each one now that I have that situated to make a border going down here if you feel that yours is too wet, you can always hit it with a heat gun and it's going to dry it off just a little bit. So I'm going to clean this off and then I'm going to go back in and stamp another pattern. I'm just eyeballing it. To get, to get it where I want. Now that I have it where I want, I'm going to come in with my cog and slide that into place and lift it. Now all of these should be in place because I'm just going to go down again to here and that should be in place. Put that in and while it's down I'm taking this off and moving it down so that I can go the length of my paper. Cool and gorgeous. So there the stamp is inked up with Michael Gloss. Going in between again. Stamp down. Move my cog down to ensure that I don't run out of space. Wow, wow, wow. Still have one more down there to do. And there it is. And so far this is what I have on my tag. Now that one got over a little close, but you know what? I'm okay with that. So now let's finish off this side over here. And uh, no, I'm not going to be symmetrical about any of this. I'm going to choose another stamp from that same open motif to use to finish off the other side. That's going to be nice. So let's get that picked up. And I'm not using the cog for this because I'm not taking the time to stop and dry that off. I will simply go into my ink and we'll go from there. And since I can see through it, I can see exactly where I want to go. Oh wow, that's cool. And then I just need to put one end down here. And 
Wow, we <laughs> get a gander at that. Isn't that lovely? I mean, it's it's just the tip of the iceberg. And now if this bothers you here and here, you can always go back and uh, fill that in with whatever you like. But I think that's a beautiful background that's going on. Gosh, and you can see in the beginning where my ink was a little heavier in some places where the impression was deeper but then where as I started to run out of ink on my palette to smooth it out a little more you can see where the lines got a little thinner but let me clear this off so if you're wondering what my ink palette looks like it's looking like that I just continue to go in now if I wanted to add another color to that let's say if I wanted to add um, this beautiful lilac and now I can give the same stamp a totally different look by picking up some of the lilac. Now, keep in mind the lilac is going to be a bit soft. So let's just freestyle this. And, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not seeing that much lilac on there. So I think I need to go with something a little deeper. So I just dropped a bit of purple on my palette. And just go back in with my stamp. Oh, yeah. You see, I've picked some up in different places. Let's go back to the card that I'm smearing. <laughs> Ooh. Wowzers. Look at that. Man. I am telling you. This is just, you know, playtime for me. So now I have a beautiful metallic background to put on top whatever I desire. Okay, now this last bit is just uh, going muddy on me because I'm scraping, trying to get the last dregs off of my card. And I think I did that. But look at that. So shiny and metallic -y. Okay, so I know these don't exactly match, but can you imagine a row of flowers on here as you layer up and build up your tag? This could just be so gorgeous and just all the possibilities of things that you can do. It's just incredible. For almost every Prima flower color that I have, there is a mica gloss that's going to match. And believe it or not, there's even some chocolate uh, mica gloss. So if you don't have any, go get yourself some. Come back and play with me in the lab. But thank you for showing up today. Please remember to check my blog at inkillusions.blogspot.com where you're going to find a lot more information and inspiration. Until then.